لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله بسم الله الحمد لله السلام عليكم peace be unto you welcome to another episode of the Dean Show we in this show are going to be talking about the prophets we've talked about them in the past shows with our special guest who's coming out inshallah God willing in just a minute we talked about the first man Adam his mission what he called the people to the way of life that he lived we established that all the prophets of Noah Abraham the ones that came before them after them they all call to the same way that way of surrender submission sincerity obedience and all of this in peace to the one God they didn't come teaching different religions with each messenger so we're gonna continue talking about some of the messengers that followed and with our next guest who's a former Christian preacher we've had him on the show many times in the past and we're excited to have him here with us today when we come back out Sheikh Yusuf Estes talking about the prophets. We'll be right back. Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God, and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Allah, there's only one God, and Jesus was His All of the prophets would have been labeled Muslims because this essential message was the same message: submission to the will of God. This is God talking to you directly. How can I stand behind the pulpit on Sunday morning and preach a sermon that I knew was at variance with the actual taproot of Christianity? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Estes. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullah. It's nice to be back on the show. It's nice to have you back with us again. Now, people know about you. They have seen some of our shows that we've done with you in the past. They heard your story about how you came to Islam. You were a former Christian preacher. Your father was a minister. Yeah. Um, we didn't have our own church, yeah. by the way. But we did work with other churches. Mm -hmm. And we had, when we get an opportunity to go and speak, of course we would. But we did a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Yeah. My dad started the Concerned Christian Centers, and we used to help them raise money for bus ministries and things like this. Yeah. We were really active, hands-on guys, and we had our own businesses. We would never needed to take one penny from any ministry, mm -hmm. by the way. Our money came from our other business endeavors. Now you adjusted your life a little bit. You're living life according to how all the messengers live life. That's I wouldn't go that far. That sounds pretty uh, austere, and it sounds pretty righteous, and I, I don't consider myself that. But I am trying to learn more about what the real message of the prophets was and when they brought it and how we can implement it in our lives. Yeah. So you made another adjustment. You used to worship Jesus. Now you're worshiping the one that created Jesus. We had a concept that Jesus was a god or a son of a god, a part of a god, mm -hmm. or something like that. So... In a sense, even when we said, well, you know, we don't worship Jesus the man, or they worship Jesus the God that's in there, and so on and so on. But it, it is confusing to many people. And so the beautiful thing about Islam, it straightens out a lot of the previous message when it came. We don't consider, as Muslims, and you know this, we don't consider that Muhammad came along, peace be upon him, with a brand new religion, a new message. That, In fact, we say that he's calling people back to the original message which came with all the prophets, Adam, Idris, Abraham, Moses, Solomon, David, so on. Today I thought it may be a good idea to kind of pick up where we left over. We're talking about Moses a little bit. We know that he was Mo Moses in the bulrushes, famous story of the Bible. We have the same thing in Islam that his mother did uh, put him in the little basket and set him down the river to keep him from being killed because they were mm -hmm. killing the firstborn of the, the sons of the slaves who were the Jews at that time. Yes. So that was, uh, and I'm sure she's not the only woman that did it, uh -huh. but uh, it was that particular baby that was picked up 
by somebody for the house of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And she was excited to have this baby and she wanted somebody to help her raise it because it would just cry and cry and cry and cry. So there was a, a girl and they asked this girl, did she know anybody who had had a baby that could wet nurse, you know, suckle this baby? And the girl said, yeah, no one. And she brought a lady and who was the lady she brought? The very mother of Moses. Mm -hmm. So she got to see her son again and she actually was helping raise her own son. Yeah. Well, we have this story. It's a nice story. But what is that going to do for you and me today? Now, all that I just said, what is the benefit? Do you have anybody killing your oldest son? No. you got a river, Nile River's running by your house. going to put your kid in there? No. Um, there's These kinds of things just are interesting to note to compare to other stories. But I want to find something that's going to benefit me today, that when I walk out in the street, I've got something to hang on to that will benefit me, help me get through the day better. So that's why we'll go to some of the things that he encountered in his life that were problematic. We already discussed what happened when he hit somebody and killed them. Mm -hmm. We said that you can't say that's an accident. You can say it was an accident on his side as far as it wasn't what he intended. Yes. But the fact that he hit somebody, even hitting somebody in Islam is wrong. Mm -hmm. You don't have the permission to strike a person unless they've struck you and then only to the extent that they hit you. You can't hit them twice if they hit you once. You can't yeah. hit them hard if they hit you soft. So for a prophet to do something like that, that would be a sin on him and he'd have to repent for that. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be a major sin like some people would attribute and say that, uh, you know, things that they've said about these prophets. We wouldn't yeah. accept that. It's also interesting to note that when we look at the lives of these prophets, that they did come with a message that was very applicable to their time period. Mm -hmm. Let's take that for example. At the time of Moses, there was a lot of emphasis on magic. Yes. It tells us in the Quran about it as well. We find the first instance here about black magic and how mm -hmm. it comes about. And at the time period that it came, it came in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the time of uh, at Baghdad, and it was many, many, many millennium ago. And Allah sent down two angels, not devils, two angels to teach people this black magic, this magic. It's called Sahar. Yes. When the people saw it and how it worked, then they were ordered not to do it. So it was purposely done to tempt people, just like the fruit was to tempt Adam. Mm -hmm. They were showing this black magic, and then they were telling the people, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And of course, people did it. And we still have people doing black magic today. Things that cause a, a strife or a problem between a husband and wife, you get them divorced, something to get, like put a spell on somebody almost to make them want to marry somebody that they wouldn't ordinarily marry, things like this. This is the kind of stuff they practice. Mm -hmm. By the way, it won't really work on anybody who Allah is protecting. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's a real believer, trusting in Allah, then you protect them from it. But it is a real thing. Now, at the time of Moses, magic was a big thing. So here were these court magicians mm -hmm. who were doing all kinds of magic that was really fake stuff that they made up to scare people, to make people think that they had power, and they were saying they got their power from the king, mm -hmm. the pharaoh. Yes. And how that works is that as long as people believe that the king is the one with all this magic, he's letting these magicians do it and so on, then he gets them to give their money over to him, their authority over to him, and he takes over and acts like a big shot. Mm -hmm. He's another one, as we discussed with the subject of Abraham, here's another person saying to the people, he's a god. Yes. And he wants people to worship him, obey him and everything. And of course, Allah doesn't like that. That's wrong. So M Moses is being sent to Pharaoh, the very house where he was raised. He was raised in the house of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And when I say house of Pharaoh, I don't mean that particular Pharaoh, by the way. Yes. It's believed that, that the Pharaoh that actually brought him in was dead 
at the time of him being full grown and having the message, and that it was either a son or some descendant, you see, mm -hmm. of that Pharaoh. Now, so this would be somebody more of a contemporary, somebody closer to the age of Moses, too. Yes. And what he comes with is first the message to say that these are the children of Israel. Let them go, let them worship their God, leave them be, don't treat them like this. And, of course, Pharaoh's going to say, well, I'm God, you don't tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. So Allah sent signs along with Moses to disprove this business of these magicians. Yes. And whereas the magicians would throw out these ropes that they had, which they had some kind of wire thing or threads or something attached to it, make it look like they were snakes and move them around, you know, with the people not knowing how they did it. Kind of creating an illusion? Definitely illusions, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Allah is telling Moses, you stretch out your stick. Now they had ropes that became snakes. But he told Moses, just take that stick that you walk with. He even asked Moses, what is that you got? He says, is this stick? And I use it for this and that. And he said, I want you to stretch it out. And when you do, it's going to become a snake. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. When Pharaoh called his magicians forward and said, here, now, do your magic, scare the people. And they start doing their magic. And of course, the people are like, oh, 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 look out, look out. Maybe that snake will bite you or whatever. Then Moses stretches out his stick and it becomes a real snake, a yeah. big, real snake. And it goes around and eats up their ropes or their trick things. And then when he stretches out his hand again, it turns back into a stick. Mm -hmm. That's when the magicians say, okay, that's enough for us. This is a real, real prophet. We'll be right back. He is the maintainer. Coming to the truth requires two things. It requires deep thinking that you've already done, but it requires another step, and that's courage. If you have the truth, but you don't have courage, you won't stand up for the truth. And that's as good as standing up for falsehood. I, I would say this thing that you just told me, it's not in the scripture. And they would say, a marginal note added by a scribe, yeah, okay, we know that. And I'd be thinking, if you know this is not the Bible, why are you preaching it as if it's gospel truth? What happened to these magicians next now that you said they saw the snakes, they said this is a real prophet? Oh, well, they said we believe in him and his God. Mm -hmm. So they disbelieved now in Pharaoh as being a God. They probably didn't believe anyway. But they said, no, no, we believe in the real God, the God of Moses. Now Pharaoh is going to take exception to that immediately and say, well, how dare you in front of all these people? I'm paying you to say that I'm the guy behind all the magic, and how dare you? And he's accusing them now, you got some kind of uh, allegiance going on here to Moses. Mm -hmm. And you're just trying to overthrow me now. So by golly, I'm going to punish you I, for what you've done. And he ordered that they have their, arm, their limbs cut off on opposite sides, arm and leg on opposite sides, and crucified them. And they said, we don't care what you do. Because we'll never believe in you. And we do believe in him as being a prophet and as being a representative of the one true God. And th they didn't mind even dying. Mm -hmm. And the wife of Pharaoh was another amazing case because she also believed. And Pharaoh was really upset, you know, my own wife believing in this. Yeah. So what was the message here is the things that came with Moses, the water turning into blood, putting his hand in his coat, pulling it out, it is white, it, like, it looked like shining. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible says leprosy. But that wouldn't make a lot of sense. But he pulled it out, and it was shining like a light. And he put it back in, and we pulled it out. It was normal again. Mm -hmm. Another thing that happened was the locusts that came. And all of these things were being predicted by Moses, saying, you've got to let them go, or you're going to have these disasters come on you. And he said, I don't believe you. But then when the disaster would come, he'd say, well, okay, okay, take it away and I'll, I'll keep my end of the bargain and let them go. But as soon as the disaster was over, he'd say, well, nah, not really. Or his uh, advisors might tell him, you know, don't listen to him and keep them enslaved. Yes. Until finally they, they were, uh, after the death of his son, Pharaoh finally just got weak. He said, uh, that's it, go, just get him out of here. Well, when they left, they came up against the Red Sea. Where will we go now? So even all, some of Moses' own people 
began to ridicule him. Look, you took us away. We were in safety over there. Now you got us messed up, at least if we were over there. But who was saying it were the ones that were not doing the hard brickwork. They were the ones that were a little higher up in that uh, mm -hmm. superstructure. Well, now when they got this water on the one side of them, can't go anywhere, and here comes Pharaoh and his troops, the army is coming for them. And they're saying, oh, we were better off left alone. And, and, but now Allah is showing Moses, stretch your stick out again. Well, this time he didn't become a snake. By slapping the top of the water with that stick, then Allah caused the water to open and part. And it said that they crossed it without even getting their feet wet at all. Oh, and I got all the way to the other side, and Pharaoh's going in after him. Now, Pharaoh must have been really on something weird because <laughs> what was he doing? What was he thinking? You know, do you see that water part like that, and you just go in there after them? Haven't you figured it out yet? Mm -hmm. But when people don't want to believe, and especially when they're in a rage, then they're liable to do anything. And this is the mentality that he had. He, he knew better, but he did it anyway. And it went after them, and then Allah caused the water to close in on them. As he was drowning, he said, I believe in the Lord of Moses. Now, that makes, that would, most people would say, well, that makes him a believer. He died as a believer. No. Because when you say it at the last minute, that doesn't count. Yeah. When, you, when, it, you, when you're knowing you're going to die, mm -hmm. and now you're ready, okay, I'm going to die anyway. Let me go ahead and say that. No, no. And he didn't say, my God. He didn't say, I believe in the Lord of the world he said, or the universe. He just said, I believe in his God. And so for whatever reason, he didn't get saved. But Allah said, we will save him in his body. Mm -hmm. We'll save him in his body and he will be a sign for all times. And it's interesting to note that Dr. Maurice Bukhai, the French surgeon and scientist, who was called in to study about well, maybe 40 years ago or so, he was called in to study one of the Egyptian uh, mummies. Yeah. And while he was studying it, he, uh, they were doing some uh, forensic studies on it. They came to the conclusion he didn't die a normal death, he drowned. Mm -hmm. The other thing was they said his body was not embalmed, yet it was preserved. And they, he became amazed and he said, this is too amazing, it's the, from my Bible. And they said, well, we're Muslims. You know, there was Egypt. And they said that uh, we know that this is very likely because his being here like this, preserved without preservatives or without embalming, is a fit fitting of the scripture of the Quran. Because the Quran says this. Yes. That he would be a sign. Not only would he be preserved, but a sign. And now he's on tour. Mm -hmm. That same one, if that's Moses, there it's been taken around and people staring at it, looking at it, saying, look at that mummy. Yeah. So these were the events that happened that we get from the verbatim word of God, the Quran, mm -hmm. that talked about Moses and the unique situations that he was... Because born. the people of that time mm -hmm. were focusing on that subject, Allah sent somebody with those qualities to show to them that this could only be from Allah. Mm -hmm. Now the next one, well, let us talk about in a couple centuries, uh, a couple millenniums ago, we're talking about 2,000 years ago, the Greeks and Romans and so on had a big influence and impact on the people. The Romans were running the show at that stage and they were focusing everything about medicine, medicine, all about mm -hmm. medicine, trying to find ways to live forever, to live better, to be healthy. That was a big thing to be very super healthy back then, you know? Yeah. So when Jesus, peace be upon him, came, this is a focus here, that he did miracles that they were not able to do, to give a blind person sight, mm -hmm. to cure a leper of leprosy, skin diseases, to have someone who was a cripple that could suddenly walk, and then finally the ultimate of all things, and this was definitely assigned to everybody, regardless if they were Jewish or if they were a pagan worshiper or an atheist, a man who's dead for, I think it, the Bible says four days, but uh, Lazarus is dead, and he comes back to life. Now, how do you explain that? And that was known that that happened. And these were things they wished they could do, but couldn't do. And here Allah showed them, no, this is definitely a representative. So this brings us to another area of our discussion about prophets. We've already mentioned that they all came with the same message. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And we also said that they had to have a great character. But when they come with message and verification, miracles, mm -hmm. called in Arabic, muajiza, when they're coming with muajiza, it's, it's going to be clear to anybody who sees it, how can you explain this? So now we're talking about Jesus. We went from Moses, peace be upon him, to Jesus, peace yeah. be upon him. Now, this is there's another problem. We, like, again, I don't want to just say everything in chronological order because it's not fair. We'd be skipping over too much of it. But there was another one, an Arab prophet by the name of Saleh, of many ancient millenniums back before any of this. And he was telling his people, to come to the worship of the one true God and to obey him, pray to him, and uh, be good people, be moral, be upright, don't do bad things. Yes. Well, these people were really a tough case. Mm -hmm. They lived in a desert where they only had a one well. Yes. Okay? And they were saying that because they would pray to these false gods to get water to come out, you know, from their well. Mm -hmm. And he's telling them, don't pray to God. And they said, we'll never believe and unless you bring us a sign. Well, what kind of sign do you want? Well, here they came up with a good one. They said, okay, there was a big boulder, a huge rock. They said, make that crack open like an egg and make a pregnant camel come out of it. Some high demands here. First of all, how do you crack open a boulder like an egg and then it's hollow inside and it has a camel, and knowing that the camel is pregnant. And they said they'll believe then? Yeah. Okay. And Allah made it happen. SubhanAllah. The rock split, out comes a camel, and she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Now, how did she get pregnant inside of a rock? How did she come out of a rock? I mean, you know, uh, this is so bizarre that there's no possible way anybody can explain this. This is either the wildest tale in the world, or it is such a miracle that you don't have any option except to believe because you named it, you said do this, and it's something impossible to do, then it was done, so now why don't you want to believe in God? But it comes with a condition. That was the other thing I want to tell you about. Mm -hmm. When the prophets come with these big miracles, they come with a condition, that after it comes, you don't have an option anymore to say, well, I didn't know, uh, maybe this, maybe that. You either believe or a great and horrible punishment will come in this life, and in the next life. And that's why Noah was upset with his people. He knew if they didn't believe they were going to be punished, they would drown. That's also why Jonah was worried, Eunice, why he was concerned about his people. None of them accepted. He knew a great punishment was going to come on them. And sure enough, when he came back, they had all accepted. Mm -hmm. you know? We see the consistent message, what you're telling us, that these messengers, they call people to worship one God. None of them are so far calling people to worship themselves, saints, idols, etc. Now we left off with Jesus, peace be upon him. No, we left off with the, the she-camel. The she-camel, yes. Yeah, because here we are, what happened? Did they all accept it? Yeah. What, Initially, what they didn't have any choice. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you didn't then, you'd be the idiot. Because yeah. you said, you know, you wanted some miraculous thing. It happened, okay, so now what are you going to say about it? But the deal comes. Now a test comes to them. And this test is that they're not allowed to drink out of that well every other day. Yes. Why? It's because this camel, she's going to drink it dry. Mm -hmm. She could consume the entire contents of the well. Yeah. Then it would be uh, water that following day, and they'd have to draw extra water out for themselves to be able to sustain the day with no water. Mm -hmm. Then the next day they could get water again and so on, and this continued. Till one of them, he got fed up, he said, why do we have to wait for this camel, and why does she get to drink all our water, and we don't need her, and so he kills her. This mm -hmm. is mentioned in the Quran, he killed her. Yes. And for this, for this, not for killing a camel, again, this is not the point, but for this uh, such huge disobedience. You've been given a sign, you've seen the miracle you asked for, and then you've been told now you have to let her drink, and you blew it, you blew the test. And instead of letting her drink, he killed her. Mm -hmm. So he and all those with him that were on that same mentality were destroyed. Mm -hmm. Allah sent uh, a big... Uh, I think the big wind came on them. Yes. There was one, uh, people were uh, uh, destroyed by raining fire on them. Another were destroyed by a great wind. And then another that were destroyed 
by a big sound, a sound that came through that wiped them out. Oh, it's, it's amazing. But each time they had a prophet that came, a warning that came, a sign that they saw, and then something they have to do afterwards. Uh, for instance, with Jesus, when he came, he had his miracles, his people needed to believe in him, and all they had to believe is he is the chosen one, he's the king, he's the chosen, he's the Messiah, he's the Christ. If you'll believe that, then you're okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, act on what he taught. He told people that you have to obey the commandments. If you break even the least of the commandments and teach that, you'll be the least in the kingdom. I'm taking that from Matthew 5, 17. But the point that comes out of this real clear, Jesus is telling them, keep the commandments. If you love me, you'll love the Father and keep the commandments. This is a clear teaching. So how could anybody come along and say, well, then somebody else came later and said, no, you don't have to keep them anymore. So th this would be the com complete antithesis is what Paul say came with something opposite now where God Almighty and Jesus is saying keep the commandments and you have Paul who's coming with something different. Would this be in line with what the, exactly the, the prophets... point that I was driving home but I don't like to you know in a television program I, I, I don't like to say it too harshly because mm -hmm. some people get the idea oh you you don't believe in the Pauline doctrine but actually there is no authentic manuscript from Paul today. Everything that we've got are copies of copies of something and we don't know how much of it has been interpolated. We don't yeah. know what it's been played with. But somebody somewhere along the line wrote that it was okay to break these commandments. That for instance circumcision was no longer the foreflesh as it always had been. Even Jesus was circumcised himself. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, whoever wrote the documentation is saying no, it's a circumcision of the heart. Well, what is that supposed to mean anyway? Circle your heart? cut out your heart, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those who want to believe that, they, they'll be upset with me because I've said this, you mm -hmm. know. They don't want to hear that any more than those people wanted to hear some of the messages that came with their prophets. But we come now to Prophet Muhammad. And with Prophet Muhammad, it is very clear that he came with one of the greatest of all miracles that ever came. That was the Quran itself, which still exists in totality in the original form in the Arabic language. Now, before you talk about the Quran, is there any miracles that he did? Name a couple because we're going to have to have you back to wrap this series up of the prophets. We're almost out of time. Is there any pr living miracles that he did during that time? I don't know what you mean by a living miracle, but we Not, do know I mean the living miracles of the Quran, but miracles at that time that he did. Well, we know that the moon split. They, they asked for something this just is like... Documented. Oh, yeah. Okay. They asked, his people asked him to come up with something. And he, uh, uh, like the camel coming out of this uh, rock, and uh, they wanted the moon to split. And the moon was split, and uh, they saw it on both sides of the mountain of light called Jabal Nur. Mm -hmm. And they verified it even with some people who had been in the desert. And there were travelers, and when they came to town, they asked them, and they verified they also had seen it on the same night. And that's just one of many. The water came from his fingers and gave water for the people to drink. There were animals that spoke and confirmed that he was the prophet. There were many things that happened. And there's a cha chain of narrations that witnesses that witness all this that we have Absolutely. authenticated. Not them. only we know, it's not just something that we have written down. It's something that we can tell you who said it and who these people were, where they got it from. But we can talk about that in the next program. Okay, we're going to have to do one more to come to a conclusion. Tell us, you mentioned Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Closing this show, was there any difference in their message? The essential message doesn't change. Worship God without any partners. The other things that come along with it are going to be the test that comes to the people due to the miracles that have come along with it as yeah. well. Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah, we'll okay. talk about that in the next part. Thank you for being with us again. We're going to have Look you back to, to do another one, inshallah. Okay. And I hope that y everyone who's been watching this series with Sheikh Yusuf Estes, you can visit thedeanshow.com and you'll see where we started off with the first man, Adam. We covered Noah, we covered Moses, Abraham. And I hope you can see the consistency that the message has always been the same. Submit to God. Do what God wants you to do. Obey Him on His terms. And we're going to do another show, inshallah, God willing, to continue talking about the last and final messenger, no more messengers to come, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the living miracle that he came with, 
the Quran. So you don't want to miss that next show. Keep tuning in every week to thedeanshow.com. Until next time, assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. You have to pray as if everything depends on Allah and it does. But you must work as if everything depends on you and it doesn't. That's my point. You see what I'm saying? And I don't like that. I don't like us sitting here. What are you waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? What are we waiting for all these people to come to Islam? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? When they're going to come? They're going to come to Allah and bring these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our hand the ability to do it. Now do your job. It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see, oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart I'm your sinful slave You're my loving Lord I'm the one who runs away Oh Allah guide me